Whenever I analyze a cryptocurrency, I always check to see if it has strong fundamentals. One of the best fundamentals a crypto project can have is that it provides an innovative solution to a common problem. As the cryptocurrency space continues to grow, so too do issues involving interoperability. Whether it's communication between various layer twos on Ethereum or bringing Bitcoin to Polkadot, the demand for an interoperability solution has never been higher. REN is one of the few cryptocurrency projects that has been tackling interoperability head on. The market cap of REN's wrapped Bitcoin token on Ethereum has grown to over $1 billion over the last few months, and the REN protocol has expanded to support other chains like Solana and Dogecoin. Despite these impressive milestones, the REN token seems to have flown under the radar for the most part. It hasn't flown under my radar though, so today I'm going to bring you up to speed on what I believe is one of the most underrated and undervalued cryptocurrencies on the market. Before we get down and dirty, you should know my role in this journey. I am an educator and entertainer, not a financial advisor. That means nothing in this video should be interpreted as financial or investment advice. You should also know that I hold REN as part of my cryptocurrency portfolio. If you're curious about how much REN I'm holding, well, you'll have to watch till the end of the video and don't you dare skip ahead. If you're new here, lend me your ear. My name is Guy and crypto is my reason why. Here at the Coin Bureau, I crank out the highest quality crypto content you'll ever consume. Crypto news, crypto reviews, crypto stats, and crypto facts are just a few of my specialities. If this sounds like a delicious itinerary, make sure you always get your fill by subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell. I know I just told you not to skip around, but I didn't really mean it. I've put a few timestamps in the video timeline that you can use to do just that. It helps the YouTube algorithm if you watch the whole way through, but I understand if you've got other things to do. Right, that's enough small talk. Let's rev up with REN. If you have no recollection of REN, here's a quick rundown. REN was founded by Australian software developers Taiyan Zhang and Liu Wang in late 2017. Back then, REN was known as the Republic Protocol and focused on making it possible to do trustless over-the-counter trades. In case you're rusty on your lingo, an OTC trade is basically a peer-to-peer -peer trade involving a large amount of cryptocurrency. Republic Protocol rebranded to REN in 2019 and shifted its focus to interoperability, making it possible to transfer cryptocurrencies between blockchains in a trustless manner. In other words, without relying on a centralized party like an exchange or custodian. The REN mainnet launched in May of 2020, making it possible to use Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Zcash on the Ethereum blockchain. This is thanks to REN's unique cryptocurrency wrapping protocol called the REN Virtual Machine, or REN VM for short. This nifty piece of tech accepts cryptocurrencies from supported chains like Bitcoin and automatically mints an equivalent amount of tokens on the desired destination chain. If this destination chain happens to be Ethereum, the minted token would be an ERC20 token called REN BTC. The REN VM is operated by a network of dark nodes which perform the computations required to do this. The kicker is that these dark nodes can't actually see how much cryptocurrency is being converted nor where it is being sent because of an advanced privacy algorithm called Shamir's secret sharing. They also can't steal the cryptocurrency in the REN VM, and you don't have to give over any personal information for them to provide this service. This is in stark contrast to another popular cryptocurrency wrapping service called Wrapped BTC, WBTC, which requires KYC to use and holds your BTC with BitGo, a centralized cryptocurrency custodian. Dark nodes on REN must stake 100,000 REN tokens to process transactions and earn transaction fees in the currency being converted. This high barrier to entry exists to prevent malicious nodes from joining and corrupting the network. In case you're wondering, yes, you are able to convert REN tokens like REN BTC back into actual BTC using the REN VM. If you want to learn more about how the REN VM works, then you can watch my previous video about REN 
by clicking that link up there in the top right. A lot has changed since I last covered REN. Just one week after that video went out, REN partnered with Akala Network to bring Bitcoin to the Polkadot ecosystem. In September 2020, REN announced that they would also be supporting the Binance Smart Chain in addition to Ethereum and Polkadot. In October, the REN token was listed on Coinbase. In November, REN unveiled their multi-chain upgrade, which foreshadowed support for Digibyte, Dogecoin, Filecoin, and Terra on Ethereum and the Binance Smart Chain. A special presentation for Avalanche in November by REN co-founder Luang Wang revealed that REN will also be supporting the Avalanche blockchain. REN also announced that they had partnered with MyEtherWallet to make it possible to mint REN BTC using BTC in the MyEtherWallet mobile app. In January this year, REN officially made it possible to use Dogecoin on Ethereum as REN Doge. REN's integration with OpenDAO also makes it possible to mint dollar peg stablecoins using REN Doge as collateral, which is truly unique to say the least. At the start of February, REN announced that they had officially joined Alameda Research, the cryptocurrency trading firm behind the FTX Derivatives Exchange and the Serum DEX built on Solana. Naturally, this means that REN will soon be supporting the Solana blockchain and will also be integrating with the Serum DEX. This is probably going to take some time, however, because support for the Binance Smart Chain only went live with the release of the second version of the REN bridge in mid-February. Not surprisingly, REN's first stop was PancakeSwap. Now, if you don't know what PancakeSwap is, I recommend you watch my Uniswap versus PancakeSwap video by using that link in the top right. All of these developments, partnerships, and integrations have had a predictable effect on the price of the REN token. When I covered REN in July, it had a price tag of about 15 cents. In mid-February, REN reached its tentative all-time high of $1.5, a 10x move. This was likely driven by the announcement that REN had officially added support for the Binance Smart Chain. However, it's not just hype that's been pumping the price of REN. Quite the contrary. The REN token also has some fairly robust tokenomics. For starters, REN has a maximum supply of 1 billion. This supply is quite evenly distributed among the 45,000 or so wallets which hold the token, save for the dark node staking contract. Interestingly enough, staking is the only utility afforded to the REN token, various DeFi protocols notwithstanding. To be honest, I was initially turned off by this single use case for the REN token. That's because having only one use case limits the demand for the token, which means the price action will not be as pretty as it would otherwise be if the REN token was used to, say, pay for network fees for the REN bridge. However, watching an interview with REN co-founder Luang Wang convinced me otherwise. In it, he explained that the price volatility of the REN token needs to be minimal to protect the security of the network. Introducing another use case could add a lot of speculation to the value of the REN token, which could act as a barrier to entry to new dark nodes and incentivize existing ones to sell their stakes. Because REN has a single use case as a stake for dark nodes, the value of the REN token is technically less speculative and more closely tied to the value held in the network itself. As you can see here, the market cap of the REN token is almost one to one with the total value locked in the REN VM. Luong also explained in the aforementioned interview that dark nodes consistently earn between 10 to 20% per year relative to their stake. In case you forgot, REN's network fees are paid in the currency that's being converted, not with the REN token. This means that the 10 to 20% interest dark nodes are earning is real and not coming from the sort of relentless token printing you see in just about every high yield DeFi protocol. This has attracted nearly 1,000 additional dark nodes since I last covered REN. That's despite the fact that you now need to shell out well over $100,000 to run a dark node. In other words, the value of the REN token hinges on the use of the REN VM, which has been steadily increasing over time as the DeFi ecosystem grows. This will only accelerate as REN adds support for Polkadot, Solana, and Avalanche in the coming months. If you're wondering just how high the REN token could go, this seems to depend on how much TVL it gets from the additional change it will be supporting. 
As exciting as the Binance Smart Chain integration was, the fact of the matter is that people don't seem to be using REN to wrap their assets. Instead, they're opting to use the Binance Exchange, which lets you withdraw multiple cryptocurrencies as BEP20 tokens at no additional cost. Something tells me that the FTX exchange will offer the same option for the Serum DEX, and the architects behind it might actually end up being the REN team. This means that most of the demand for REN is coming from people using Ethereum DeFi, which is of course highly congested at the moment. Moreover, WBTC is still the leading wrapped Bitcoin option by a wide margin, and nobody really seems to be minting anything else but wrapped Bitcoin using the REN VM. That said, once the retail investors really start flooding in, there will be nothing stopping the REN token from heading higher. As I mentioned earlier, the distribution of the REN token is remarkably equitable, and most of its supply is also currently in circulation. This means there probably won't be any whales dumping their REN tokens on new investors when the price starts to rise, unlike many other cryptocurrencies. REN also has a relatively low market cap, meaning it wouldn't take much capital to push it higher. Be sure to keep a close eye on that TVL ratio, though. If it falls below 1, this might mean that REN is undervalued. If it's high above 1, you'll know REN is probably in bubble territory. There are a few other factors to keep in mind as well, namely the other revamps to the REN VM that REN is cooking up. In brief, the end game of REN is to become the interoperability hub for the entire cryptocurrency space. This is how they're going to pull that off. So far, REN has done a good job of plugging different chains into the REN VM. There are just two problems. First, minting wrapped versions of Bitcoin on other chains like Ethereum requires six network confirmations on the Bitcoin blockchain. This takes a lot of time, too much time if you're trying to execute a mind-melting arbitrage trade between two blockchains. REN hopes to eventually make it possible to instantly mint these assets by creating an elaborate loan system behind the scenes. This would see a network of loan providers grant instant access to a wrapped version of Bitcoin the moment the Bitcoin transaction is sent to the REN VM, and they would earn fees for doing so. The second problem is that it's currently not possible to swap REN BTC from Ethereum to the Binance Smart Chain directly. You have to unwrap that REN BTC, put it back on the Bitcoin blockchain, then wrap it again for use on the Binance Smart Chain. Once Polkadot, Solana, and all the other chains have been plugged in, REN will work on a way to make it possible to seamlessly swap the same asset between these chains directly using the REN bridge. To protect user funds on this roided up REN bridge, the REN team is hoping to get decentralized insurance for all the assets in the REN VM. Now, this would be a first since, to my knowledge, decentralized insurance has only ever been given to individual users, not an entire cryptocurrency network. This brings me to one little known fact about REN, and that's that the REN VM actually has a blockchain of its own. This blockchain even supports smart contracts and uses a modified version of the Tendermint proof of stake consensus mechanism. Luong noted in a fall interview that REN intends to open up the REN blockchain to DAP developers in the next year or so. Given that so much liquidity is locked in the REN VM from so many different blockchains, we could see seriously unique DAPs being built on REN if and when this happens. There is just one pain point for REN, and that's centralization. Even though the REN VM has nearly 1800 dark nodes, they do not actually have very much power over the network. Almost everything about the REN VM is controlled by the Grey Core, a set of 13 dark nodes run by the REN team. These are also the only dark nodes which actually participate in REN's proof of stake consensus. This has given rise to concerning headlines such as this one, which highlights REN's dangerous degree of centralization. REN co founder Luang Wang has been grilled about this in many interviews as well, and has explained that this degree of centralization is required to fix any unexpected errors until the REN VM has been sufficiently battle tested. One of the examples he gave was a user who sent a large amount of Bitcoin to the REN VM and then somehow corrupted the Bitcoin wallet that was sending the transaction. This caused the Bitcoin transaction to fail before the REN VM got the six confirmations it needed to mint the appropriate amount of REN BTC. Thankfully, the REN team has been planning to decentralize the REN VM for some time now and detailed this process in a Medium post last summer. 
Decentralization is the focus of RenVM Mainnet Sub-Zero, the next milestone on the Ren roadmap. By the end of Sub-Zero, the Ren team will have wound down their Graycore nodes and handed over the entire network to Dark Nodes and other Ren token holders, which will be able to vote on various changes to the network. No date has been set for this yet, however, and something tells me that it will be pushed back with each additional chain that's added to the Ren VM. On the bright side, the Ren team has been incredibly transparent about how much influence they have over the network. This has made me confident enough to continue holding the Ren token despite centralization concerns. Let's just hope nothing goes wrong at Ren HQ. Ren is one of those crypto projects that hits the spot. The ability to transfer assets between blockchains in a discreet manner without a centralized party is an extremely valuable thing. The advanced tech the Ren VM leverages to do that is the cherry on top. You probably noticed that I also enjoy listening to Ren co-founder Luang Wang. I find that you can learn a lot from watching interviews with a project's founder, and Luang offers no shortage of information and insights about what's going on at Ren. Listening to interviews with founders tends to reveal a few other milestones and missions that have not been written down or are just hard to find. On that note, what the crypto news has covered about Ren is really just the tip of the iceberg. This is actually good news for anyone paying attention to what Ren has really been up to. They've put themselves in the perfect position to be that interoperability layer of the cryptocurrency space, and I think it's only a matter of time before this begins to be reflected in the price of the Ren token. For the record, only about 2% of my crypto portfolio is Ren. That's mainly because I can't justify adding any more to a project that is so centralized. There are enough risks to cryptocurrency investing as it is, and the last thing I need is for someone at REN to drain one of those REN VM wallets holding millions of dollars worth of crypto. This would instantly crash the price of the REN token. Insert by the dip reference here. Anyways, I really can't wait for the REN VM to become fully decentralized. Once that happens, you can bet your ass I'll be participating in Ren's governance forums. Maybe I'll see you there too. If you love this video, give that like button a flick. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell if you haven't already, because the crypto market never sleeps. Speaking of sleeplessness, if you're up at night watching the charts like I am, join the Coin Bureau Insider Telegram channel to make sure you never miss promising crypto gems like Ren. You can also follow me on Twitter to get my two cents about the crypto market and follow me on Instagram to see what it's like here at the Coin Bureau studio. Since the channel has been growing so fast, I've actually hired my own personal paparazzo to document my every move on TikTok. So allow me to introduce you all to Macy. Hi guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll be posting some awesome TikToks featuring Guy and myself here at the Bureau. You can follow the official Coin Bureau TikTok using the socials link in the video description. Yeah, and while you're down there, you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter where I drop the knowledge you need to make the most of this bull market and reveal the other 98% of my portfolio. And as the team here is expanding, it would be wonderful if you took a moment to browse through the Coin Bureau merch store and see if there's anything you like. Otherwise, <clears throat> this one will be working for free. What? That's all for today, folks. We'll see you next time.